hope I am audible to everyone. Is it here? Yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, so I'm Ravi. I'm one of the founders of People Tech Ventures. We develop cool location-based mobile applications towards offline commerce. So basically, we want to help you find, uh, basically engage with the offline brick and mortar retailers. So through basically through mobile applications, through websites, by SMS, it can be anywhere. So that's what we develop. And yeah, we develop Direct Circle, which is a location-based shopping app, which is available over Android, Blackberry, and iPhone, and web, as well as on SMS. So, so uh, based on my experience in developing client side, I mean, uh, so we have developed the Direct Circle web app as a basically it's a thick client side application. So we uh, everything is done client side. So based on my experience, so these are some of the pros and cons I figured out while developing a thick client side app. So. So firstly, I mean, I want to give the basics of what is client-side templating as well as rendering. Okay. What happens in typically in a, like, so there are different ways of developing a web app, right? So, uh, so in many of these applications right now present, so basically the server renders all the HTML and then it's sent to the front end. And the clients are just dumb, they just basically uh, render the markup. So they are, the, the HTML is not actually rendered in the client. They're basically everything that all the HTML is rendered in the backend with backend templates or uh, it rendered in the backend and just the markup along with the data everything is sent to the frontend. But recently many clients at MVC frameworks came up, so which basically want to change the way we develop web apps. So what happens in the clients are templated? Basically the server sends the client templates, which are also the static assets. These templates are nothing but some snippets of HTML, which basically, like once you give the data to the template, it basically renders a renders a view with the help of the template. I'll give you examples once I go more we'll take, uh, more inside. I'll give you an real example of our application itself. I'll just show you the code of our application and show you how it actually works. So, server sends client templates and the application code, which is basically nothing but the JavaScript code, and then the application code is a view. It just initializes the official view. And then as the user interacts with the frontend, like let's say with the, the website, so he clicks, he basically does different kinds of emails, so the requests are sent to the backend and the, and the response are again come back in the, form, in the form of JSON. And then the JSON data is again basically rendered in, the, rendered in the view by basically applying the data to the templates. So, I mean, it can be more abstract right now, but I'll just show you once I basically show you the example which is more clear. So what are the downsides of server-side rendering? So before we go to client-side template, so why should why should we move away from server-side rendering? Because it's coupled. So the the in a in the basic in the typical server-side rendering approach, so everything is coupled in the sense that the client code as well as the backend code is coupled, where you actually uh, and a single person has to work both on the client-side code and the backend code. I mean, the responsibility is not shared. Even uh, like that is one big problem with the complete design, and and that results in actually a lot of problems. Like you, one one example is basically the client side code becomes ugly because of basically it's very coupled coupled design. One thing is let's say if you look at like the other problems of server side rendering. Right? Let's say simple post on Facebook. Which is a, along with the comment, it basically results in nine point one KVF markup because though the data is very small, so the markup along with it, it becomes basically very big because it has a lot of HTML and what and then the events data and everything is basically has to be sent every time every time the request happens from the client. So so there are a couple of things. First thing is every time uh, let's say there are thousand requests per second happening from the client. Okay, so then. Every time the, the HTML has to be rendered in the packet and then has to be sent to the friend. So uh, even if the templates are similar, so every time I have to do this thing. Okay. So then there are a lot of lot more lot more uh, processing to be done on the packet than on the friend. Even if the clients, basically the browsers, are very much more powerful, though we are doing the rendering on the packet, and then the infrastructure has to deal with, I mean has to scale with that. And then since and then the other thing is the caching. So, if you, if you look at client side templating, if you do the client side templating because all the assets are static, so then the, uh, 
So then these can be cached. Whereas in the some side approach, these templates can't be cached, and then everything you are rendering always in the backend. So be, though there are some kinds of caching in the backend, the, the templates can be cached, but it's not so the best way. And mainly, so the, this is a, the final point is the transfer of data plus markup for every request. It's not the efficient way of doing things. Which is leading to dumb clients, there's a lag in the request response times. And also, which also resulting in an optimal user experience because the user has to pay for every request. Yeah. Are we talking about a full page report or feeding rejects with the snippets from you? Yeah, so basically, there are different, yeah, I mean, it is, so you can, you can say 100% client side or 100% server side, right? So there are two different things. See, if it is 100% server side, there's complete refresh. Mm -hmm. So that is completely unoptimal user experience. And if it is some part of it is server side and some part of it is client side, then it can be better. So, what are you So, uh, so uh, here I'm actually leading to the complete server side rendering. And uh, yeah. full page. Full page. When I click on action, everything happens. Yeah. So, if I just get the HTML snippet for what needs to change, to the changes, and then plug it in. So, there are two things, right? Okay. So, there are a couple of things. Okay. I mean, yeah, actually, I think the, the things which I mentioned actually contain both partial thing as well as the complete thing. Because in the partial thing, let's say, in the, say the, the complete thing is basically we'll have to do a complete refresh. Mm -hmm. uh, where you basically for every refresh you load the complete page. There's a partial thing where you say that when, the, when I click on an event, mm -hmm. I get the response from the backend. Mm -hmm. But the response from the backend is not in JSON, but is in, again in HTML. So there, there again there is, there you are rendering the templates in, in the backend and then sending the HTML. So this is the partial approach. Mm -hmm. And then the complete 100% client side approach is basically you send the data in JSON, the rendering in the client side. So there are the three different approaches. Right? Mm -hmm. So here, I mean, yeah, actually, it's a, uh, actually I mixed up everything. Right? The partial and the 100 percent server side application. And I can show you some ugly client side code which I can actually basically. So, I mean, in our applications, we have used two approaches. I mean, in basically, we have a two platform. I think one is merchant platform and one is front end application. So for the merchant platform, we have used backend rendering. We use backend templates. So I'll show you one code, I mean some part of the code which we actually use. So this is a backend uh, server side template. So this is a basically server side HTML. Okay. And then I write, so this is a HTML, though it's a front end HTML. So this is the client code looks completely ugly. Because I have to write all the backend stuff also in the front end HTML. So the guy has to write, I mean the printed guy has to write both, uh, I mean the person who is implementing this has to write both the printed code as well as the backend code character. Otherwise, if I use it, if I, if I do it with the client, if I complete it with the client app, so I can say, I give the API to the printed guy saying that these are the APIs you need to call. You just need to make this API calls and then do the rendering. So then the client code actually looks much more better, which I'll actually show you later. So even the server side implementation can be much better. Yeah. Like there are templating schemes that can be used on the server side, which can separate the logic out of the yes, uh, yeah. But then the, yeah, but then there's a problem is that so there's one part of the one thing. It can be done. Right? It can be done, but the point is there also you're also rendering, the, but there's performance. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I, I take that, yeah. but you can't show this code and say on server side has to be this way. We can yeah, exactly. It. I mean, yeah, two parts of this the same thing actually. Yeah. <laughs> so we have used jQuery templates also. Where uh, maybe I've done that. So and then, what is the what is the process of the thing like? I mean, the like. One is decoupled design, as I mentioned. So basically, the complete backend and the front end are completely you can decouple it, and then that results in a good architecture because in the backend you just say that through backend end you write these APIs. You say, okay, let's say we are doing something known as to do list app. So you need to write the app. Basically, the APIs for like okay, get all the tasks, add a new task. For all these things, you just write write all the basically the API calls. In the front end, you basically say that these are the things you need to do. You can actually use a backbone or ABC any kind of framework, and which can actually sync with the backend automatically. So that's what you basically uh, share the responsibilities, and then this guy only leads leads the front end, and this guy only leads the backend. And then the best part is the API based multi-platform. Actually, I mean, 
I would I would tell you why we used. Uh, I mean, why did we go with the, I mean, client side application for client side as well? Because so we we instead developed an Android application, okay. and then we wanted to develop a API based platform approach so that in, right now instead I can go with mobile app. Then I basically do a web application. Then I do a mobile web app. Or I, tomorrow I need to give a, expose the APIs to someone else outside. So so API so right now I mean API based ap approach is very much. Basically, it's getting popular if you have the vision of basically exposing the APIs to people outside. But there are cons of using a client side application, which I'll come back. And which is leading to better structure, separation of responsibilities. And since if you use a client side application, all the assets are static. Even the, uh, even the HTML, JS, CSS, and the templates, now all are static. So, so, what my web app server has to do is basically can use an engines server in which basically just sends HTML or static search directly to the front without, do, without doing anything. So it can be a simple server. And more static assets results in easier performance, I mean better scaling approach and simplicity and power. And why should I use a template engine? Why not just write using JS? I can write using JavaScript, write, use push or direct uh, array list and all. Right, uh, I mean, render the HTML. Why, why should we use a template engine? So the advantage of a template engine is that it's much more readable, main, maintainable. Basically, could, uh, since you keep the templates after it, would automatically change the templates and then automatically change uh, the views change. And then it's usable. And then it's understandable. That's the main thing. So, what are the cons of main, uh, thick lines? So, so, these are some things which we experience based on our experience. Is one thing is the is main thing is the performance varies with the browsers. This is a big problem because you develop a client side application, but you don't actually which I mean uh, the the performance varies with every user who basically uses from a different browser. That is the main issue. I mean a person who is using from a Chrome 10 or like Firefox, basically the performance varies because it's a client side application. You don't know. Whereas in a server side rendering, I do everything in the back end. The, the browser just has to basically render the HTML in the front end. So that is the biggest issue with the uh, with the client side, the client side applications. And the other thing is a build process generally required because you, I mean, I, I can show you some. Because this, there's a lot of JavaScript which we use. I mean, in an application like ours, so there's a lot of JavaScript files we use. Okay, and then each JS you write it right. So basically, why, why do you need a build process? Because we need to verify the HTML, we need to verify the CSS, we need to verify the JavaScript, we need to combine it together, and then make it such a way small so that it basically. Uh, otherwise, it becomes. See, first thing is to reduce number of HTTP calls made to your server. The second thing is the overall size of the JS has to be reduced to a little less so that the complete JavaScript apps actually can be caged even in the printer. And <coughs> another biggest problem is the search engine indexing. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't, there are pretty good hacks of indexing pages to search engines, okay. But there are a couple of, I mean, the problem is this I mean, uh, Google has basically provided this. Uh, format basically you have this hash fragment to basically index the JavaScript based websites, Ajax based websites. But the problem is, like if you are using the client application where the JSON is sent from the backend, okay, the, uh, where not the HTML is sent from the backend, if there are, the only way you can do is basically you have to generate an HTML snapshot every time you get a request. You need to identify that the request is coming from the search engine, and then you basically render a HTML snapshot from the viewer backend. Basically, using a headless browser like HTML unit or something, you need to generate HTML snapshot and then send it to the front end, uh, send it to the search engine for indexing. So, this. Chromers don't actually execute the script, is it? Chromers don't execute the JavaScript. So, basically, uh, that's what, that's the problem. So, we have to use a headless browser to execute the JavaScript and then generate the HTML and then send it to the search engine. So, these are the biggest. Uh, so, I think this one problem, so many people who basically I mean, generally, that's the reason many client applications are basically more SaaS based applications like Asana, 
and these kind of applications were both not consumer oriented applications. But there are pretty hacks, people have done. Uh, and then we, we are also doing that. So, what about what about the backend and stuff? Have you managed to yeah, yeah. work properly? History works. Yeah, bookmark to back to the Yeah, yeah, all those things work. Yeah. At, at the very fine tuning. Yeah, yeah. At the very fine tuning. Uh, yes, 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 you could do that. So, I mean, I'll tell you once we go to the uh, framework, I'll just show the code. So, basically, yeah, all these back buttons and the exact bookmark thing and everything is there's no issue. Uh, because the, the MEC frameworks have basically came to that extent that they can handle all the they, they, they provide you construct, but it's still very complex to uh, do it right. I mean, we use backbone works. And uh, the thing, as you mentioned, for generating HTML, I think it's not made to it. So it's not made to Google will throw you up. No, 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 that's what they There's a clause which says uh, what you show to the user should be what uh, the search engine says. No, exactly, but I do the same, right? You know, you're not doing the same, you're sending different content. No, no, that's what they mentioned in the in their standards. That's what you need to do. If you have, if you have basically have communication with JSON, mm -hmm. you need to do it this way. That's what they basically they means. As long as you are showing the same thing in terms of like for the user as well as, see, here I'm basically using headless browser and I'm making the same API call to my web page, generating the HTML. Mm -hmm. so what about all the interactions? Uh, the links when I click the next page should come up. Yeah, so yeah. You're, you're, your site should be discoverable, not just the page should be visible to the uh, search engine. Yeah. It should be discoverable. Every action that I want to perform, yeah. I want the search engine to perform those actions and get, go to the, the rest of the site. Yes, exactly. I mean, see, so the HTML is generated, right? So again, the HTML will have to keep in such a way that if you have anchor tags, then basically doing handling again by your JavaScript. If you use anchor tags, again, the search name will go through them. Uh, have you looked at using the same templates on the search side also? Or? Is it like two independent implementations now? One for the browser and one for the search engine? No, no, uh, for the search engine, this way I do. Okay, I mean, I do this. So you use a browser? Yeah, the in the search engine, what I do is, let's say I get a request to my engines mm -hmm. in server. So I get a request from the search engine, I identify with the escape fragment. And then I send it to a headless browser with a different server. And the headless browser makes call to the same, same URL, which basically was type to index. Generates the HTML, basically by executing the JavaScript. And then send it to the Google. So, I mean, what is the sweet spot? I mean, basically, this is what you are basically going to discuss like 100% server side, 100% client side. So, which is a best way. So, mostly server side rendering plus JSON by Ajax with client side templates can be the best part. Okay, we can, we can do. The first thing is reduces the number of requests and shares rendering load between client side and server side. So you, you can use a hybrid model of things. So I mean, uh, now I would like to show the demo so that will be more clear to you, I think now. So basically our application is simple, web app application is like we use in front and we use backbone.js with bootstrap template. And then because we have written a backend basically on AWS server which basically expose the REST APIs and then we use our front end to basically consume those APIs. So this is the so we use the API platform approach. Our web app is nothing but just another client. So I mean we have also used backbone. So it's a proven client side MVC which is used by many other startups. I mean silicon valley startups. And then Mustache is used for client side templating. And then jQuery for normalization. And then there's iCat has which is a jQuery library which basically works well with both jQuery and uh, Mustache. Because Mustache has a different kind of syntax, so basically I can ask basically it's a wrapper about it. So I would I would go basically show the next uh, I'll show you a flow of the, the, how our application works. <laughs> I mean yeah. I'll show you the code code structure as well. So this is a typical black backbone application. So in a typical backbone application, so I'll tell you one important thing is there's nothing in, I uh, mean, so I mean in HTML, there's, there's not much. I'll show you, let's say these are index.html. I'll show you one uh, cool part. In our complete index.html, if you look at our body, there's nothing. There's nothing in the body. In our, these, are, these are production application of ours. I mean, I'll just show you the production code. There's nothing in the body. So everything is in the templates. So these are all the templates. 
These are all the usage templates. So index A like other templates. And actually we use require or something to basically download templates whenever required than just downloading all the templates at a time. The templates and these are all our JavaScripts. So these are our JavaScripts. And I'll show you structure of this. <coughs> and then there's one thing this this initiates application. So this is the first thing we have to basically execute and this initiates application. And to show you the structure of structure of a typical basically like we I mean uh, basically the client apps use and we use something similar is basically like so there's a structure I think I think if, if, you, look, if you look at if you have many of these backend applications so you must be you must be actually because we use backward MVC right so we have models we have views we have controllers similarly like you have MVC approach in the backend okay so there are the models views and then the controllers yeah so I'll just show you a typical flow like let's say the application is initiated and then there's this initiate which calls and then there's a router. So these are router basically which basically depending upon these routes the corresponding functions are called. If so I say like let's say home, then basically load home is function is called and then that actually that is the controller which basically gets involved. Let's say load offers. Let's say I, for you to give an example, I just want to show you the example of this page. Where basically when I click on offers, I, I want to show you how the offers are content is loaded. So here the, the basically the function which is getting, getting called is basically this load offer search. So when you look at this URL, search slash offer slash every load slash copy. So basically this is the function which is getting called, load offer search. So this gets called and then this basically invokes the function load offer search basically depending upon the query it takes a query element and then depending upon the then it invokes that. So this is a function which is getting called. Load offer search. What do you do for testing? Do you follow a GDD approach or? Uh, uh, in the terms of like front-end testing. Yeah. Uh, like for, for all these JavaScript, do you follow do you use Jasmine or anything? No, no, we haven't done mm -hmm. testing, JavaScript testing. So what's your build process for only minification? Minification and then uh, basically we minify HTML series of judges mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then also basically parse the syntax at all. I mean that is the main process. Not, we, we didn't do the testing part. So this is the API call which basically search offers which is the API call. It takes an attribute long input and the query which basically makes the API call and then base. So we have written a rest client which basically makes the API call to the server with the given parameters. And then once it gets the data, it keeps the it basically contacts the data. I mean if you look at this callback, it takes an air, it gets an API of course. But so this is a rest client request which basically sends a uh, send the request to the server and then once it returns the data. It basically keeps it in a deals collection. Deals collection is basically a model which is a collection of items. So in back one you basically have item models and the collections, right? So I, have, I keep nearby objects in a collection and then basically make a callback, and then which, which again, which here you get an app dot view sort of a collection item. So this is a view. So they are controllers. So controller basically uh, calls basically to the server and then keeps it in the models, uh, which is basically a collection. And then again, it gives to the view to render the view. So and that view basically renders it. So yeah, I mean that is a brief part. Yeah, so these are basically so the controller gets a call. I mean, but the pretty good things we could do with backward basically, which is the same part, which is the same part where you actually like let's say if you have a to do list app. So where you basically have all the backend APIs basically for the task, and then you have frontend APIs, I mean frontend views for the task. Let's say I remove, I let's say I remove a view. Basically, I, I want to delete the task. 
Okay. So you can hand in an event for the view saying that this event has been removed. Then it basically automatically, so when the view, when, when it is removed from the view, it basically invokes a model. It's saying that this, this, this task has been removed. So then the model, it is also removed from the model automatically when you basically write it such a way. Then the model is removed. And then what backward is it also, it, it, it automatically sits to the server. Server gets API call saying that this that task has been removed, and then basically the server basically syncs in the database. So that's what happens. So you can add, actually change it in the view, or if you, you change it in the model, let's say you get some more data, you basically say get again refresh the task. You get, then the model is actually refreshed. When you refresh the model, then you actually get again you can refresh the view automatically. So backbone works in either way. So you can either write events, you you write events not only for the views, you can write events also for the models. You are not using the rest yeah, yeah, we are not using the rest single approach. We are using because we didn't actually write in that. If you would have developed in the client side application in the web app approach from the start, then you would have, we could have written that way. So there is one problem with the crossing domains. I mean, so we basically our web app is in so our backend is in aba.elastic.com because we need to isolate both the front end web app as well as the backend web app because there is one thing because we want to keep the production isolated from the the backend set up isolated from the front end. And the other thing is, we, it's also a secret matter of security. So how, how do you basically cross domains? It's a basically typical, uh, because you can't actually make API calls from one domain to other. Even if, for us, even if it is subdomain, actually browsers don't deliver that. You can't actually make API call from deluxe to API or deluxe or similarly postcode. So what we did, basically it's a hack we did, basically like, we kept an iframe on, uh, on the backend and then Basically, iframe source which is on the backend server, and then that iframe we embedded in the web page of the So when when the basically the web server web, web app first loads, it loads this iframe, and the loads gets the data from this I mean server, which basically says that document dot domain is delighted dot com. So that way, in that iframe, the document domain is set to delighted dot com, and then what I do is do the magic of same origin policy. I use this. Uh, the, I create XML HTTP request object in the iframe and then I share that iframe XML HTTP request object to all the API calls. So when I am making the API calls, I use the XML HTTP request object of the iframe, not using, not basically in shop writing it separate in the web page. So there is a simpler option, right? <coughs> Make your Nginx proxy equals to the API. Nginx? You can go, you have an Nginx reserve static content. Yeah. That can I act as a proxy and forward it to API on the server side? No, no, there are multiple problems. So one thing is we want to maintain a session. 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 Basically, like uh, in the last, I mean, we need to maintain a session from front end to back end. So what we do is in, uh, in the back end, we get this XML in the side frame. So if it says we set a session in the front end. So the session has to be the same. I mean, because he, I allow to use a session to basically to make the API calls. I basically set a session for dot delete dot com and then so you'll have to set a domain for the session, right? So we yeah, yeah, put it. That's I mean server set. So we made it work with the proxy as well. And I think we do know this one. That's a much simpler as the most time. No, I actually have a super forward. So all your requests will go to delay itself and dot com slash API. And on the back end you forward it to API or delight city dot self and dot com with a delight rule and that's more proxy Apache or Nginx. So you don't face the same origin policy, you don't have to do all this gymnastics if you don't go to the next thing of the API. Another thing is this ID. No, no, this JSP. I mean, there's only one option because for our use case, there was only option is cross. There's cross object is actually where you can set in the backend. But the problem is that, uh, I mean, not all browsers support that. No, JSP works. No, 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 the cross origin is sharing where you basically say, right? No, that, that's a different spec. Another way that you can do this is JSON. It's basically the idea is anytime you say script uh, src equals URL, right? That can be cross domain. It also allow that. So it's basically we just make it like a hack. So you basically use that to. Uh, so the only requirement is all your server side APIs, they have to, uh, when they render the script, they have to render it as a call to a client side function. So, you're, so let's say you're uh, you're filtering a JSON, right? So what the server should render is something like callback of your JSON, and your callback will be defined on the client side. But that, that does that be a decoupled design? Sorry, that will not actually be a decoupled design. Right? So because I'm using the same JSON API for each for every client which I have. So typically, how they do that is they distinguish JSONP calls 
course, is non JSON we call we are some query string parameters. For instance, uh, even you know, uh, Google Maps, Facebook, or whatever, right? We make those calls, they pop clicker, they provide a, a variant where you question mark, JSON, callback, and callback name, then it returns. Uh, See, yeah, but see, I'm sorry, are, maybe yeah. we can take this discussion offline because sure. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah. Maybe one quick question. I mean, you can download the realizing lab for your mobile. I mean, we got fantastic reviews on our applications. Search for realizing lab stores. Okay. Uh, you wanted to show a video of what's going on with the video? One minute, if you have time, to show you one video of what's at the end. Do you have questions, guys? Yeah. But Twitter has changed the architecture of the yeah, client side to server That is because of the same reason that basically, uh, so Twitter uses the same approach like they do. Because see, the problem, like many of us who basically have this API based platform approach, use this to take client app approaches. But Twitter faces the same problem because is that, I mean, their performance is basically varying from different projects across different users. So they want to basically have a similar experience across different users. So that's the reason they are moving from client side to server side. So that is what you are recommending, right? The hybrid model. Hybrid model. Yeah. I'm recommending the hybrid model actually. I, I myself say that I made mistakes in mind some of them. Mm -hmm. So I am actually uh, trying to make some hacks. So the first trick was get HTML and the interactions afterwards is JS. Yes. That's what you mean. Yes. And I mean, what you could do is like some part of it, rendering could be done in HTML where you till where you want the basically the SEO or whatever the performance, where you can show minimum, minimal gap of loading. There you basically can use uh, JSON templates. I mean, User client side templating at least till all our browsers become good. Till all our basically all the users browsers are basically everyone uses best browsers. We'll have to use that approach and hybrid based approach. So it's not just browsers, right? Like Twitter, the problem they had is it will just uh, download a static content and it has to make one more request to get the data. So there's two requests, and, uh, and by the time it's showing a signal, there's no data there. Because there are two requests. Okay, so in degrading, okay, so you have to write your applications in such a way that they degrade uh, gracefully when you don't have JavaScript. So I have I work internally at a place called Lupato. Yeah, so uh, we do not have a very JavaScript heavy application. The web page isn't a very JavaScript heavy application. But even for search engine and other such activities, you always have to make sure that you load some content in your HTML, which the search engine bots can crawl and yeah. provide links. And you, uh, yeah, your exactly. PHP or your uh, server packet always has to render the same information that your JavaScript or client side will render so that whichever user is accessing, whether with JavaScript or without JavaScript, they can get the same experience. Yes, they exactly. may not have the same user in, uh, interface, but they get the data. So you need to work on both the sides. You can't just leave it at one side. Have you seen after you talk? If there is more question, maybe you can yes, take okay. it online. Yeah. Uh, can I sh have show you a video? Yeah, I mean, people are just to conclude the work.
delights of the mini shopping fast and easy. I can store all my loyalty cards and redeem my rewards on the application as well. And look for places where I can shop and eat. Delight Circle gives the power to the shopper. I'm just selling 50 points of it. Thanks. Thank you very much.